Hi, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I guess I need to up my game. Did you guys see that darling video that my grandson did on this quilt behind me? Oh, it's so cute. If you want to see it, there's a link below, but he is just adorable. Anyway, I want to show you how to make this quilt. Let's take a look at it. So this is the Sunburst Dresden quilt, and it's just beautiful and so simple. I love how big they are. I love the sunbursts, and it's just a technique you'll be able to use in a lot of things. So to make this quilt, what you're going to need is one packet of 10-inch pre-cuts. We've used um, Lime Twist by the Henley Studio for Make Our Fabrics, and it's, I mean, it's, you can see by the line behind me, it's gorgeous. We have used um, about three quarters of a yard for our, our sunburst middles and the, uh, the little uh, pokey thing, pointy things that stick out. And then this uh, first border is about three quarters of a yard of background fabric. For, for the piece that you set your Dresden on, you can do two things. First, you can buy regular yardage is going to take you about three yards because these are like 27 inch squares. However big your plate ends up, you want to measure two more inches off uh, bigger than the plate is so that you know if your plate ends up being 25 you're going to want a 27 inch block so that's a big block of fabric and it's going to take about three yards of regular fabric I actually used backing fabric now backing fabric is is 108 wide and so I only needed a yard and a half of that to make my big blocks out of that and it, I felt like it used it was a little more efficient but you guys can do whatever you want the other things you're going to need you're going to need a Dresden tool you we also use this small simple wedge um, for our little rays of the sun in the middle and then just the normal regular things so let me show you how we do this so I want to show you how to make this quilt from start to finish you're going to need to make a lot of Dresden blades there's 20 in each plate so we're going to have 80 of those. I have several videos on Dresdens and you know they're just really fun to look at. You guys know I'm a little obsessed with the Dresden plate and there's just all kinds of things you can do with them and this is just another fun idea. So one of my favorite things about this is that our ruler goes actually from top to bottom so there's very little waste. So on this on this 10 inch square you can get three cuts. So let me show you how we do that. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to cut up one side and if you have a nice rotary mat you can flip it or just turn it like I did and then we're going to go down the other side and you've got your your blade and you're going to need 20 of those for each plate so here's our blade and to make this dress and it's so easy what you're going to do is you're just going to fold this straight in half like this so right sides together straight in half and you're going to sew right across the top. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that. All right. Stitching down the middle. And you do a quarter of an inch right across the top. Now you're going to, what I would suggest doing is going ahead and cutting out all your blades and then just sewing them one after another after another. I, I like that assembly line kind of sewing because then when you're ready to get into the meat of the project, everything's done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this blade and we're going to flip it. Now I kind of like to, you can trim off this corner, but it's just as easy to kind of fold it over with your finger and push it through. It makes a nice clean point and then we're going to press that down and just put it down. You want your seam to line up on the middle of the Dresden and you want it to lay nice and flat like that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to set those aside because now we have to make the sunburst, the part that makes a sunburst. And to do that we've used the simple wedge tool right here and we just need to cut out um, a row of these and you're gonna you're also gonna need 20 of these for each plate and so as we cut them out you're just gonna you're just gonna rotate them you can lay them set them on the set them on the bottom edge of your fabric like this and so you'll cut one here and the next one will line up right alongside it so you only have to cut one side after you cut that first one so let me show you how we did that and I think yeah my fabric isn't quite even so you need a nice straight edge to start with let's start that all right, now we have a straight edge. And we're going to lay our little template on here, like this. And we're going to cut up one side and down the other. And then we're going to come and we're going to lay this template right here by the line. You can see it lays right up on that line. So now we're only cutting 
we're only cutting that one side and across here and if you cut out your strip so it's exactly the size of your your simple wedge then you you don't even have to cut across the top so very quickly you're going to get lots of these little little triangles and it just goes together really quick all right so now that you have your little wedges, this is going to make your sunburst. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to go to the ironing board and we're going to fold them right in half like this. Now one of the fun things about these solids is that there really is no front or back. So we're just going to iron them in half and we're going to do that to, to all, all of them. I'm going to do it to a few here just to show you how it goes. There we go. All right, so now you can see these are like folded right in half and ironed in half. Now we're gonna show you how to make the sunburst. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start sewing our Dresdens together, but they're gonna be sewn together in twos. And we're gonna lay this wedge right here on our blade. So the bottom of our wedge goes right here and the point goes right along the edge of the Dresden. So you can see how that looks. It goes right along there. We're gonna catch that in our quarter inch seam. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna lay our next Dresden on top like this. And we just probably ought to stick a pin in here so that nothing moves. And then we'll head to our sewing machine. Now you wanna start from the top up here because this is what we're worried about, this looking good. Down here in the bottom, that's gonna be covered with a circle, so we don't worry about that too much. So right here, we're gonna come and we're gonna do a quarter of an inch all the way down, making sure that our little wedge here gets caught in that quarter inch seam. So let's head over to the sewing machine and do that. All right. Now I'm just gonna peek in here and check and make sure that it's still in there pull my pin out so then what you get is a piece like this where that little wedge is just stuck right in there we're going to go ahead and iron this open and then you just keep doing that and making you know sewing twos and twos together and adding it to your circle so right here I have one that's almost done and as it gets big like this, see these two last ones are gonna go right in here like that. But you can see I still need to put my wedge in here and over here. So I'm gonna lay my wedge in here like this. And I'm gonna take my little set of twos and to make this one I just did twos, twos, twos. Then I put my wedge in there and did fours, fours, fours. You know, you just, you just wanna get 20 in a plate. So now we're just gonna stick this in here like this make sure it lines up lay our piece that we're trying to sew on top on top of that put a little pin in there to hold it and then we can head over to the sewing machine and stitch that down all right here's this one side and i'm just going to peek to make sure that the top of my wedge is still in the seam and pull this pin out. I don't want to sew over that. And then we just have to add one more set to finish it up. I mean one more wedge in here. So we're re almost ready to close our circle. So here's our last little wedge. Let me press this so it lays down a little better. I think it got pressed when the iron wasn't very hot. All right. So then we're going to lay this in here, just, just like we did every other time. We're going to fold this over. We're going to lay this one on here, making sure that this one doesn't get caught in the seam. So you want to make sure that only the only blade that's in there is the blade you want to be in there, because otherwise you're going to have to do a little ripping, and that's not our favorite. All right, so then we're just going to sew this down again, like this. And take my pin out. There we go. And now we have a plate. So let me move this stuff out of the way. We'll open it up 
and you can see there's our plate. Now what we want to do is we want to press all of our wedges going the same direction. So to do that I like to press from the top so I can see which way they're going. And you just press them down like this and then I just move out to the outside to make sure everything lays down nice and flat. And so there you have it, your finished plate. This is your finished Dresden plate right here. And so now we need to add it to the background square. And what I do with my background square, this one I've cut out already, and it's two inches bigger than my plate. I'm going to fold it in fourths like this. And I'm going to find the center. And to find the center right here, I'm just going to iron, put my iron on the edge of it. So it's going to make um, a little, little crisscross in the center, and I know that that's where my blade is going to lay. All right, so we're going to put this on here like this. And you can see that little folded crease right there. I'm going to center that up right there. Now I need to make sure that this doesn't move. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some pins in here. You can also slide some scraps of heat and bond under here and just iron it on and uh, stitch it down that way. It is a, a really good idea to make sure it's adhered on here really good. As these plates get bigger, you know, they tend to shift a little more. So you want to make sure that there's no movement in them or you won't have a nice flat blade. So now we're going to talk about the circle in the center. That's this one right here. And you want to make sure that you find a circle that's large enough to cover your points. When you put your plate down, you'll see that these little points on the edge of the wedge, they come up a little bit. So you want to make sure that your circle is big enough to cover those because you want to cover all your raw edges. So what I do is I go around my house until I find just the right size object and I trace it onto my fabric. I have it traced. I have two pieces cut out here. The tracing line becomes my sew line, so I don't have to be perfect. I just have to, uh, I mean my cutting doesn't have to be perfect. My circle should be perfect. Um, but not the cutting. So now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew on this sew line, completely enclose it, and then we'll flip it right side out. So let me show you how we do this. We're just going to sew on this line right here. This makes, this is a really clean way to do any kind of applique. It's a, just a turn method. There we go. All right, so now I have my two circles right sides together, sewn together. I'm going to trim up this edge a little bit so I don't have so much bulk inside. And then, there we go. And then we're just going to flip it right side out. And to do that, we just got to pull these pieces apart like this. We're going to cut a little, make a little cut in one side and then cut us a slit so we can turn it and then we're going to I'm going to run my finger right along the seam so I get all those little folds out of there and we'll come over here and we'll press it down so we have a nice flat circle make sure all your little folds are pulled out of your out, out of the edges you don't want you want it to be nice and round not angular All right, so then you have your circle for the middle of your Dresden and we want to stick it on there. So one of the things I like to do is I just take a piece of um, heat and bond, a little scrap like this, and it doesn't have to be round or anything because we're just trying to get it to hold on. So we're going to put that on the back of our circle, make sure the nubby sides are down, iron a little piece on there. I'd rather use heat and bond than pins any day. <laughs> I just like it. And since I'm not um, hand quilting, oh, I need to iron a little more. Since I'm not hand quilting, it doesn't matter if it gets uh, another layer in there. All right, let this cool a minute. I always get in such a rush. And then we can pull it up. It's very hot. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, there it is. Perfect. And you can see this shiny stuff on here. That's the stuff that kind of glues it down. So then what we're going to do is we're going to slide this over to the board very carefully. Of 
Make sure all of our edges are still covered in here and we're just going to set the iron on there and let that heat and bond do its job and stick down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a blanket stitch around the center of the circle and around the edge of this big Dresden plate. So no handwork on this, it's all a blanket stitch from the sewing machine. The blanket stitch is the little stitch that you'll see that goes along and it goes and then one up. It just reaches over to take, to grab that fabric. And so it's a great little one. You could use a zigzag or anything that you'd like on here. Uh, so carefully move your, your thing over here. I'm going to set my, my stitch up on here make sure it's the right one and you probably I have done this so I know what's going to happen but you probably want to test your stitch to make sure that your stitch is going to look what you like what you want it to I hope you can see how this is looking as I go around here sewing the center first will anchor your Dresden your plate onto your fabric Make sure your blades stay laying down and your little circ your little uh, wedges stay laying down too. Your sunbursts. And as quick as that, your little circle is down. So now we're going to do the edges. Let me go ahead and cut this thread. So on these points, when you go on these points, this there requires a lot of turning because once you get to the point out here, you want to make sure your needle's down and then you're going to turn down and go the other direction. This is where it's super helpful to have um, pinned your Dresden on really well because you don't want that moving. So you want to make sure your needle's down and then you turn and you're going to go ahead and sew the entire thing on there. and just keep going. If you have a needle down, this is a great place to use it. So now what you've done is you've sewed around the middle edge, you've sewn all the way around the outside edge of your Dresden, and if you don't like the blanket stitch, use a zigzag, use one of your other fancy stitches. You can even straight edge it if you want. You can actually hand sew it down. So don't be afraid to try some different things. But once you finish this one, you're going to do that three more times. Then what you're going to do is you're going to sew these great big blocks. Here's our big block right here. You're going to sew those great big blocks together and you're going to make like a giant four patch. You're going to put your first inch and a half border on and that, that border is uh, included in the fabric that you have for the circles and the um, starbursts. And so that's about three quarters of a yard. Your outer border is about a six inch border. We went for a pretty big border and that's about a yard and a half and you'll end up with a quilt that is 62 by 62. It's just a gorgeous quilt and an awesome way to make a sunburst Dresden. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Mm -hmm.